Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, one of the believers in New Zealand asked the question, fermentation in wine would be equal to leaven in bread, would it not? So, Brother Jacob, do you believe if that is the case, that Jesus took unleavened bread and said that represented his sinless body, then took fermented wine and said, this represents my sinless body? Thank you, Helen. Thank you for your question, Helen, and blessings to our friends in New Zealand, all of the All Blacks fans and so forth. Thank you for listening. Helen, you ask, would it not, this equivalency between fermentation and leaven uh, is a false equivalency. They are not the same. With fermentation, you have a natural reaction to do with oxygenation of certain chemicals, where you will have a CO2 byproduct from a fermentation reaction. If you store cherry juice or grape juice under certain conditions with, with, with sugars and so forth, you will get a fermentation reaction at a CO2 byproduct. It'll happen naturally. You don't have to put anything in to the substance other than what's already there specifically, you know, fructose and the juice itself. Um, with bread that you leaven, is something different. You actually have to take yeast, chametz in Hebrew, and put it in to the batter. Now, yeast spores multiply very quickly, of course, biologically. In that sense, you can make a contrast or a comparison between a fermentation reaction and a uh, multiplication of yeast spores reaction, and that they both happen very quickly and gain a momentum of their own and permeate the base substance, be it wine or bread. In that case, there's a similarity. But in one, it comes from what it already is. In wine, it'll ferment because of what it already is. With bread, you must add something. The bread that Jesus, of course, used had to be unleavened. It had to be matzah, hag, hag matzot. It had to be matzah. It absolutely had to be unleavened. In Greek, you only have one word for juice and wine. It's the same word, oinos. In Hebrew, however, even in modern Hebrew, we have meats and we have yain. They are two different words. And... There's substances called strong drink. We're not sure what they are. They could not have been distilled spirits. That wasn't invented to the 8th century, but it could have been hyperfermented wine, the equivalent of brandy or something of that nature. Some people even speculate it could have been a kind of beer, but nobody knows for sure, a very strong beer or a lager. Nobody knows for sure. But we do know in Hebrew we have two different words. Jesus coming from that culture. Now, again, we have Mishnaic references of the dilution of wine with water. Some would state that the wine that Jesus drank was simply alcohol-purified water or flavored water. Um, then we know there's also a medicinal property. But for alcohol to have any medicinal impact, uh, and it is used for certain things medicinally, Paul says, take it for your infirmities, obviously speaking of digestion and gastric disorders. It would have to not be very diluted. You need a good concentration. Just think of a cough formula. I know people who are rabid teetotalers. They would never touch alcohol in any form. Uh, in terms of drinking wine with meals, they wouldn't take the Lord's Supper with wine. 
but they don't think about it. If they get a cough, a chronic cough, they'll take an antitussive. Read the label of cough formulas. Most of them are alcohol-based. They are ethyl alcohol. Some of them are 70% ethyl alcohol, plus codeine or codeinated on top of it if they're prescription control antitussives. Uh, therefore, if Paul is saying the medicinal use of, of, of wine, it couldn't have been that diluted or it wouldn't have any medicinal impact. It had to be ordinary wine as we would know it or something proximal to it or only lightly diluted, if at all. Thus, you cannot make any kind of an argument establishing an equivalency between fermentation and uh, leavening. Leavening, you have to add something. Fermentation, you don't have to add anything other than what's already there. One comes from itself. The other requires an addition of something. You do and can add sugar to increase fermentation, but again, sugar doesn't reproduce itself. It simply interacts with what's already with, with the fructose and the other sugars that are already in, in, in the grape juice or the cherry juice or whatever it is. So there's no equivalence chem chemically at all. Neither is there an equivalence doctrinally or theologically between fermentation and leavening. Jesus for sure drank wine, alcoholic wine, wine in wineskins. Otherwise, you would not have the wineskins exploding due to the expansion caused by the carbon dioxide byproduct of the fermentation reaction, obviously. Uh, also, again, the medicinal value of, of, of wine that Paul points to would require that the wine not be strongly diluted. So you cannot make any kind of an argument for teetotality based on a contrast with, with uh, leavening of bread Neither can you make an argument based on hyperdilution with water. Uh, you just can't make that argument solidly. But thank you so much for your question. God bless.